for Coach Johnson? Uh, let's just talk about when you watch the when you watch the tape. What you see? Well, it was, it was basically confirmed what we thought. You know, we played very average in some some spots and, and against a really good balanced football team. You get what you got. Uh, missed tackles went up, but a lot of that's because of Mississippi State. Uh, missed assignments went up, and that was you know that's all. And, and I didn't think our players played within themselves. Thought they sometimes tried to overplay, you know, run over somebody else's area, and make a play instead of playing within the system. And against a team like that, you're going to suffer because they're balanced. And I think the, the quarterback, a very talented young man, but I think his best talent between his ears, and he makes great decisions. So when you you mess up, you seldom get away with it with a good player like that. And then the other thing that we really, uh, you know, keep a uh, Close out, what we call our accountability was finishing plays. You know, we did a good job of that. We played hard, tried to play physical, and really toward the end of the game, when the game was not in a situation where you think you got much of a chance to win, just the only chance is making stops and hope to get it and onside kick it and so forth. You know, played through all that. But you just cannot make the number of mistakes that we made against a team that has that kind of balance with that kind of quarterback. Ellis, before yesterday, you guys really hadn't allowed very many big plays on any third down, but particularly on third and long. And right out of the gate, they get three straight in a row that are all the longest plays you've allowed on third down all season. Were there things that they were doing that you didn't expect, or were there missed assignments or missed tackles? What was going on there? It, well, the biggest thing, I, I didn't realize that, as a matter of fact, I knew we were having some long plays. didn't realize that the first ones occurred on those third downs. What, what they do, of course, they spread the field, and they've got a guy back there that can throw it, and they've got a guy that can run it. And so there are times where you've got to keep people in the box, and that contributed to some of the longer pass plays because you're, you're out there on the island in coverage. Thought for the most part, our defensive backs did a good job. There's some tough things going on. There's a lot of push and shoving going on. And sometimes the calls didn't go our way. Uh, but I thought our, our guys out back competed. And in fact, we're in a good position a few times, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the other thing, we had one really bad one, but I think it was a little later in the game. And we had a call to load the box and, and had the pressure on the DBs, and we didn't fit it right. And that was the one he took for about 50, I think for about 20 yards on third and 11. So, you know, those are the ones that you want back. Those are the ones you get frustrated about. If you if you get beat, uh, you know, with Prescott trying to run the ball up and have five men in the box, that's gonna happen. But when you load the box and a player gets out of position, and, and you putting your DBs in the pressure just to be able to do that, and then you don't fit it right. That's, that's the only thing that's frustrating. But if to put it on any one thing on those plays, I couldn't. One was a missed assignment. The other one, I thought, just got beaten coverage. And uh, the third one, they just executed it really well. And, and uh, I think we missed a tackle on it was, was the biggest factor on that one. And let's see, uh, Dax, <coughs> touchdown late in the second quarter. You know, uh, the offense just kind of responded and he let that the charge over. What happened on that play? It looks like, and, and uh, Chris said after the game, he's looking more like a zone read outside, the read out zone outside. And obviously, Dak I think that's the one I'm talking about. It was going, and if you look at the going press, to your right, right to the left. Yeah. Yeah, right? That was it. You know, we were playing, play with zeroed up the coverage and, and brought the dime backer and the mic in. The dime backer didn't do it, he, he missed his fit. The, the play started to the right, fit, uh, Chris's fit was over the right tackle. He cut back inside, and he couldn't get back to him. And, you know, put another guy with the ball in his hands, he may come back over and catch him. But uh, the dime linebacker was in the wrong place and didn't fit it right. Probably better off left our two base linebackers out there and let them play it, if that's, if that's the call. But that's the thing you get into with the, with the teams that hurry up, don't change personnel. Uh, and that was one of the things they do say. They, they use their same personnel, we call 11 personnel. And they form a lot of their formations. It's about the only thing they do differently is occasionally they'll put two tight ends out there. And you know they're different. But other than that, they've got one tight end, three wide outs, one back. And so you've got to match up and uh, play all those formations. So had the dime personnel on there because of third and 11, and he didn't fit it the right way. Honestly, if John or Jones had two picks stand out and then the pass interference in their late, but what else did he do in the game and just what do you think he did overall? In that? You know, I don't know what his tackles were. Uh, I think he played pretty good, and I really thought he was in good position on the call that he got. There was a lot of pushing and shoving by both guys, and I don't know how you just call it on one instead of the other. 
so you know, we, we get them for pre-snap penalties or post-whistle penalties, what we call dumb penalties, you know, judgment things. When they're competing like that, you know, you just try to tell them, hey, you gotta do this, you gotta turn, you gotta get your hand here, you gotta look, you gotta whatever, you know, we try to fix the fundamental of it. But frankly, they were both pushing, they both had their hands up high, and you know, we didn't get the call, or rather we got the call against us. Is that a play you like to see in the SEC and just ask? <clears throat> we always ask them, and, and I'm not questioning the officials, but we, we send them in, it's, it's part of the whole routine, you know, so that they can evaluate themselves, and a lot of times they can explain to us Here's what the player's gonna have to do if you don't want that call. And the last time we sent it in, it was he's got to get his head around and make an attempt to find the ball, and he did. But there was contact, but we thought it was contact from both sides. So, you know, I, I don't know if it was a missed call, I just felt like it was a tough call that went against us. How difficult is it to defend a guy like Prescott when they, they keep you from having both your linebackers on the field just by spreading everything? It's hard. I mean, it, it, we all talk about this. It, it's, it's like, you know, everybody talks about it every day because you got the guys like Cam Newton, and we had Johnny Manziel, you know, and you got Prescott. That's the philosophy a lot of coaches are looking for. They want a guy back there that's a ball carrier that can throw the ball 40 yards. And anytime you find one that can do that, and Dak's very, very uh, talented and, and able to do that. Uh, Tebow, you know, last time we played Tebow, I think Dan was his coach. Uh, anytime you've got a player that can do that, it's just tough. You know, there are times where you're going to have to ask your front, try to handle him. We're getting ready to play two deep zone. If they can't handle him, they can't handle him. There are other times where you, you look at the tendencies and you try to load it up up front, take him away. Your DB's under a little pressure. Uh, those players are not as good and when they don't have good people outside to compliment them and they've got a good offensive line. But I think State is very balanced. You know, they're linemen, some of them are very experienced now. Running back started for two or three years. I know he started for two years. I think he's played for three of them. And uh, he, he's an older, tougher guy. Uh, the receivers are doing a good job. He got two tall receivers outside that can hurt you deep and the high balls. Got good inside receivers that fast and can run the zoom sweeps. And you know that's the thing you do is to surround that guy to try to you know get your system right. So they're going to be very difficult to defend for anybody. You know they're putting up yards and points on everybody. Thought we could have done a lot better job, but we never went into the game thinking we were going to stop them. We went into the game thinking we could make some critical stops, get the ball back to our offense, and you know we keep their their number of points down below our number of points. That's the objective when you play a good offensive team with a, with that kind of balance. If you miss if you have another game down the road against a quarterback like that, can you use some of that two star dime to almost get Garrett on the field as a second linebacker option or? Now, we moved him inside now. He was playing quite a bit, that second linebacker. Uh, Nick Ruffin's backing up uh, Parisi now. And, and really, I, we like that better. We got more of a coverage approach there where we can get that guy out. They, he can, uh, Justin can cover a lot of guys outside. And in this particular game, it wasn't that type of game. You know, Texas A&M may be a little bit more like that, more five, uh, excuse me, four wides on the field. <clears throat> These guys, you know, had a, a tight end who's a, what we call an H back who can play outside and inside. And we had some matches. He made one great catch, you know, down there near the goal line. And um, one as good as any of their wide receivers caught, you know. And uh, I, I can't really think of the reason he was on him, can't even remember. But uh, he's a really good player, he's versatile. You know, of all the players on their offense, of course, Dak's the one that can do both. But the, the uh, H back, he's the one that really gives them the versatility because they can line up with him in the box, out of the box on the box, and it makes you have to adjust on the fly. Ellis, you're six games in, regular season, six more to go. Where is the defense at compared to maybe where you're, you're, you were hoping it would be, your expectations are? I think we're playing we're playing pretty well except for just mental mistakes. We're giving away some plays. I, I think we're a little bit better football team than we're performing right now. Of course, that's what a coach always thinks. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that continues to – to be an issue right now is we're not getting any pressure on the quarterback with four people. Uh, it, it looked like Pascal back there, frankly. And until we started bringing some people and getting getting in his face, he was making good throws. Uh, one of the picks came on a, a fire zone, and the other pick came on a man pressure, uh, bringing six people. And when we didn't rush that many, he never threw us a ball. You know, we got the other pick on the punt safe when the defense was on the field. So that one, that's not 
you know, that's not, not that's not affecting him. And we affected some throws uh, later on. We got around him. But there's no question right now we're going to have to bring pressure uh, to affect quarterbacks. Uh, that's one, one thing. The other thing, I think we're improving out back. So we're very young out back. And as they get more and more game experience, this open date is going to help us too. Uh, as they get more and more experience, I think we'll be a little more comfortable back there and make plays. Some of these plays we're not making, I think they'll make them. Tell us, we've got time for one more. Is there any hope at this point to, to get Carl Lawson back in November? I don't know that. They, they just keep talking about how remarkably well he's done, but I don't know that. I, I think the hope was that he would be able to play before the end of the season. It's not something right now that it's in the very near future that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Justin, move back to the inside linebacker. Yeah. Okay.